Welcome to Discipleship 101, Class 2. Um, what I recommend is this. Mark down every class number. The reason why is this. That way you can know which one you skipped. All right, because let's say you skip several weeks, then you don't know which class you skipped and which video to watch, correct? So that's why I'm, uh, what I recommend is to write the class number down. So this one will be class number two. So every time you attend class here, write them down which class number. That way you can know which ones you skipped. And if you look at your notebook, you can also tell, oh, wow, there is a class actually that I skipped that I overlooked. And then you can watch that video, okay? All right, so I've given you everything in orientation so you all know what the business is, especially people watching online, all right? So what I'm going to teach you, I don't want people to start critiquing and stuff like that, okay? If you're still at that phase where you're still studying and searching for truth, then you should watch our other videos, not this one, okay? This one is you're entrusting me to guide you, all right? So I can't keep explaining everything, why it should be done this way, all right? All right, here we go. I'm going to teach you how to do soul winning. So that's really great. I promise you, once you learn how to witness to people, you're going to boost two times more spiritually. It's so important to soul win because you need to learn how to interact with people. That's the key thing with discipleship. It's not just knowledge, but actual experience with people. That's why I stress so much in going to church. You see that? Once you learn how to do soul winning, you know what people think. And when you know how people think, you'll be able to know how to talk to them. And not only that, you'll be able to self-control your knowledge. A lot of people, especially online, we get so much knowledge of the truth that we use that to actually stumble ourselves and other people around us. That's why the Bible says that knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. What is charity? Giving to who? Others. See, when other people are in the picture, your wisdom and experience increases 10 times more. I promise you that much. And once you learn soul winning, another thing is when you learn teaching and preaching, you're pretty much settled almost. So Sean and Tom, they're pretty much settled. They just need to learn a lot more things, that's it. But personal experience with people, they're settled. They can take care of it. So that's why this witnessing is so important. All right, so I'm gonna teach you how to witness. So Romans 3:23. That's the first one. Romans chapter three, verse 23. I'd recommend that you all start memorizing these verses. Start memorizing these verses because when you're witnessing to somebody, what's really important to understand is that, so I'm gonna put some tips as well here on the side. So what's really important to understand is that when you're witnessing to people, as soon as you start spending time turning to the scriptures, you give them opportunity to interrupt you or say that they're not interested. When you're witnessing, you you got to be in you got to keep on talking. Keep talking, no pauses. Because if you had a salesman in front of you and he stopped in between, all right, in the middle of his delivery, the person who's listening took that as an opportunity that, "Oh, hey, I don't have time to listen," right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do that. So if you've all attended soul winning, you noticed how me and other people do soul winning, right? We don't give that chance to pause. We keep them in, uh, keep on listening, keep on listening to me, see? So don't give a chance to pause. That's why it's impo important to memorize verses. So memorize the verses. Don't take time to turn over there. The reason why is because of this situation. That's why, number one. You don't want to give a pause moment. Now, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, if you don't understand this verse, your whole witnessing is pointless, okay? So I want you to fully understand these verses that I'm going to give to you. All right, what's the point of this verse, folks? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Basically, everyone sinned. So we fall short of God's glory in heaven, correct? All right. So the first step, how you do witnessing, you got to tell them this. You got to tell that you got to get them to admit that they've sinned before. All right. So tell them 
in Romans 3, 23, tell them that every, uh, tell them that everyone sinned, and because they sinned, they cannot go to heaven. After you explain to them Romans 3, 23, everyone sins so they cannot go to heaven, you got to ask them this. You got to ask them, do you know what sin is? You got to ask them that question. P.S. P.S. Here's another tip. Don't ask any questions. Don't ask any questions in soul winnings. You need to talk. The only questions you should ask in the middle of soul winning are the ones that I write here. Those are the only times you ask some question. Now, you might say, why is that, preacher? The reason why is this. When you keep asking them questions while you're talking, you, again, are what? You're giving them an opportunity for them to say, hey, I'm not interested. So don't give them a chance to talk. You got to be the one blah, 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 doing all the talking, okay? That's why you're all mem mesmerized in my preaching. Why? Because I'm talking, you're not. <laughs> I didn't give you a chance to talk, see? Mm -hmm. That's why people online are watching, keep watching our videos. Why? Because I didn't give them a chance to talk. I'm, you're watching me doing all the yakking. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you, uh, you don't want to give them any opportunity whatsoever to talk, to ask questions, nothing. You want them to listen. Don't ask them any questions whatsoever. The only questions is when I write them down on the board. Okay. Now, you have to ask them this question. Do you know what sin is? Do you know why you have to ask them that? Because people don't understand what sin is. See? So because people don't understand what sin is, it is very important you have to ask them, do you know what sin is? They might say yes, they might say no. Okay, yes. Okay, how do you know? Uh, oh, so what is sin? Oh, it's like anything bad that we've done. Correct. Do you know what sin is? Uh, no. Okay, well, sin is basically any bad thing we've done. So that's how you can answer them. Any bad thing we've done. After you ask them that, then you have to ask them, have you sinned before? Because remember... They have to understand because they sin, they can't go to heaven, right? So you have to ask them this question, have you sinned? And you got to get them to admit that they've sinned. All right, number two. Revelation 21, verse 8. Make them understand because they sinned, they're going to hell. Because they've sinned, the punishment is a burning hell. Now with number two, you don't have to ask them any questions. You don't have to explain anything more. As a matter of fact, this thing can only take 10 seconds. You might say, why? Because as long as they understand that they've sinned and the punishment of sin is a burning hell, you're done. You can jump to the next point. So basically, all you have to say is this line word for word and you're done. You can jump to the next step. Because if you park on this for 10 minutes, what do you think the person's going to do after that? The person's going to think, you're scaring me. You're trying to give me terror, you know? And then they're going to push away the gospel. Listen. As long as they understand that because they sin, the punishment of sin is a burning hell, you've accomplished your goal. You don't have to add more detail about all the gory details about hell. Okay? As long as they understand it, you can jump to the next step. All right, number three. Now remember, this is soul winning. So the point of soul winning is to use so much wisdom on catching fish. That's why Paul said, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. That's why Paul said, compromise as much as you can to win souls. So as long as it's not sin or heresy, you got to do whatever it takes, a lot of compromising or a lot of wisdom to catch the people, 
That's why I'm giving you all these tips, see? That's why I'm giving you uh, all these things on what to do. All right, number three is Romans 5, 8, and 9. Okay, this is the toughest in your soul winning. This is your toughest. So first is Romans 5, 8. Oh, by the way, I didn't explain Revelation 21, 8. So the verse says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you can totally understand that verse. It gives a whole bunch of sinners, which they've already admitted they've sinned, right? And because they've sinned, where do they go after they die? A burning hell, okay? So in number two, when you're explaining Revelation 21a, just simply tell them because they've sinned, the punishment is a burning hell. It's that simple. Now remember, don't ask questions in between. Did I give you a question here? No. So while you're talking Revelation 21a, don't say, do you know what hell is? Don't, don't do that. Don't ask any question. Whenever I say ask them a question, you ask. Everything else, never ask them questions. You're giving them an opportunity to interrupt, to take advantage of the conversation and say, I'm not interested or finish it. You want to keep them hooked, okay? Romans 5, 8. The Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, now the point of Romans 5, 8 is to get them to understand the story of Jesus. He's God who died, buried, and resurrected because that's how we all got saved, right? So you got to get them to understand the story of Jesus. Now, Romans 5, 8, this could be either the easiest or it could be your hardest. Now, why do I say it's easiest or hardest? Because <laughs> after you read them Romans 5, 8, ask them this question. Do you know the story of Jesus? Now, 80% of people are probably going to say yes, right? They're going to say yes. And if they say yes, you're actually done. <clears throat> so you're like practically done. You can jump to the next step because they already know that story. He's God who died, buried, and resurrected. So as long as they know that story, you don't have to explain. But if they don't know the story, you have to explain to them, right? So when you explain to them, that's going to be your hardest one. Okay, so here's how you're going to explain to them, all right? So when you ask them, do you know the story of Jesus? They say, <clears throat> yes, you can jump. If they say no, then this is what you want to explain, okay? You all ready? This is going to be fun. It's going to be long. All right. So this is how I explain it. Whew, this is going to be fun. Jesus is God. Who lived up in heaven. All right, I hope you're all writing this down because you, right now, if you don't want to write it later, trust me. Jesus is God who lived up in heaven. But he came down here on earth and became a man like us. He lived for 33 and a half years without uh, he lived for 33 and a half years without committing any sin. All right, now I'm going to pause right there and then Give some folks online and people here the time to type all this out. It would be so much easier they said yes to the question, right? <laughs> so you don't have to go through all this. <laughs> now, while you're writing this all out, I'm giving you time to write all this out. While you're writing all this out, the reason why this is important is this. 
this first part is extremely important. Do you know how many people do not believe Jesus is God? Anybody so, <laughs> so that's why there's a lot of people who, uh, especially who, ha uh, I notice there's a lot online too, who do not believe Jesus is God. So they'll believe everything else in the gospel, but they do not believe Jesus is God. That's very salient that they got to know Jesus is God. They have to believe in that. If they don't believe in that, then the chances of them getting saved is lower. They could be saved, I don't know, but I do know this in the gospel. The Bible says that God purchased the church with his blood. So it shows that we got saved by God himself, his blood. So if they don't recognize Jesus is the God who shed that blood, that makes it more abstract and fishy, see? So that's why this is important. All right. Now, let's, uh, let me erase it. Ready? You're all good? I'm going to erase it. Okay. So let me erase it. And then I'll continue on. So he, he lived for 33 and a half years on, uh, without committing any sin. Then, so you can type this all out or write this all out. Then there were certain people who were jealous. <clears throat> who were jealous of him. Framed him on phony charges. crucified him uh, framed him on phony charges and crucified him I'm sorry so then there were certain people who were jealous of him framed him on phony charges and crucified him all right then he was buried Uh, then he was buried and raised himself from the dead. Now he is up in heaven. Okay, what's important about this part? Within this story of Jesus, what's important is that they understand he died, he was buried, and resurrected. Because that's part of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried and raised himself from the dead according to the scriptures. That's what Paul said was his gospel. So it's important to mention these salient points right here. Okay, now that you're done explaining, explaining them the story of Jesus... You got to now ask them this question. You got to ask them, do you know why Jesus went through all this bloody mess for us? You notice I underlined bloody, right? Because you're going to give them, you're going to give, uh, give away the answer. Now, this question is absolutely important because their whole salvation will be dependent upon this question. Okay? So that's why you have to ask them the question here. Do you know why Jesus went through all this bloody mess for us? And then you answer them this. You answer them, it's because, remember, so remind them because of sin, right? It's because, remember, your sin is the problem. Is the problem why you can't go to heaven, right? <clears throat> and
and they're going to agree, yeah, it's because of my sin. What's the only thing that can wash away your sin? The blood of Jesus. That's why. So, the only thing that can wash away your sin The only thing that can wash away your sins is the blood of Jesus. And then, after you give them that answer, that's the blood that washes, washes away their sins, you go to Romans 5, 9. Oh, wow, I filled up the place already. Well, before I erase it and start all over, I'll just put it here. So Romans 5, 9. So let me... While you're all typing all this out and writing all this out, let, let's review. That way you can fully understand the point of Romans 5, 8, and 9, okay? So, let's say I'm in Romans 5, 8. So, I read them the verse, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so you can look at the board and look at your notes and see how I'm going to explain it. That way you can fully understand, okay? So after I read them Romans 5, 8, I tell them this. Uh, do you know the story of Jesus? If they say yes, then I don't have to do all this long stuff, okay? I can just jump to this question, okay? I can say, okay, so you know the story of Jesus, that he's God, died, buried, and resurrected. You know all that. But do you know why he went through all that bloody mess for us? So I can skip down to here, all right? <laughs> so you don't have to give them this lengthy uh, discussion about the story of Jesus, if they don't know the story of Jesus. Uh, do you know the story of Jesus? Uh, not really. Okay, then I have to explain to them. Okay, so Jesus is God. He lived up in heaven, but then he came down here on earth and transformed himself into a man. He lived 33 and a half years without doing any sin, but then there were certain people who were jealous of him, framed him on phony charges, and they crucified him on an old rugged cross. So he was buried, but three days later he raised himself from the dead, proving he's God, and then he went back up to heaven. So that's the story of Jesus. Now, and then I can jump to this question. Do you know why Jesus went through all this bloody mess for us? And the person's going to go, well, I don't know. And then I answer them, okay, so the reason why Jesus went through all that bloody me mess for us is because, remember, your sin is a problem why you can't go to heaven, right? Yeah. Well, the only thing that can wash away your sin is the blood of Jesus. Ah, that's why. That story is so important why he had to do all that and died, buried, and resurrected and all that kind of stuff. Because remember, you're going to hell for your sin. The only thing that can wash away your sin is the blood of Jesus. Then the light clicks on the person and goes, oh, and that's your foundation where you get them saved. See? Everything is a prerequisite, making them understand. But this is the core area where they're trusting on as their only answer to go to heaven, okay? So then after that, I show them Romans 5, 9. So Romans 5, 9, much more than, see that Romans 5, 8 was the story of Jesus. Correct, guys? Romans 5, 8 was that story of Jesus I was explaining. But Romans 5, 9 explains why the story of Jesus in Romans 5, 8 is important. So Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his what? Blood. We shall be saved from what? Wrath. See, we're saved from hell through him. And all you have to do <clears throat> is after you give them the answer, just read Romans 5, 9 and jump to the next part. You don't have to explain Romans 5, 9 more because you already explained it through all of this. All you have to do is just read Romans 5, 9. If you want to explain a little bit of Romans 5, 9, that's fine if you want to explain that a little more. What I do sometimes is after I read Romans 5, 9, I'll just remind them again. So see right here, that verse is showing only that blood of Jesus is what gets rid of your sins, as a, like a reminder or something. Okay. <clears throat> Next part is Ephesians 2, 8. So I think, uh, I thought I was going to stop midway, but I'll give you the whole thing. So you guys will be very happy. I'm going to give you the whole thing of soul winning, okay? I was just going to stop halfway, but I'll give the whole thing. <clears throat> uh, 
All right, the next part is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Now, in that verse, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. After you read them that verse, you got to tell them this. So notice here how to get saved. Salvation is not by good works. Now, after you tell them that, I'd recommend giving, I'd recommend you have to list. After you tell them that, list the good works. That way they can fully understand what you mean by that. People will, people who are listening to you talk, you know what people usually do? Uh-huh, 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 like they watch TV, okay? And when they say uh-huh, uh-huh, they don't really know, okay? They don't really understand. So... When you say salvation is not by good works, they might agree with you. But if you give them specific examples, then they'll really understand. Now, I'm going to give you three examples here to use. I would recommend this because these people, uh, they always rely on these three things. <clears throat> One, now this is a must, is water baptism. Because there are people who don't think water baptism is a good work. I kid you not. They think that there are these people who say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm saved by the faith of Jesus Christ, not by good works. But when they say that, they're thinking deep down inside that water baptism is salvation by faith, not by works. Now, some of you are thinking, are you kidding me? Getting baptized is a work, right? But surprisingly, there are cults out there who teach you are saved by faith, not by works, but they don't think it includes water baptism. See? So water baptism is one. Two, attending church. Three, or any, and stress this, or any good thing you do cannot save you. All right, so here, how I, here is how I'm going to explain Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. So I turn the, to them the verse. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So notice right here that the Bible says you cannot get saved by doing good works. So this includes water, getting baptized by water doesn't save you, going to church cannot save you, or any good thing that you do in this life, it cannot save you. And you're done. Then you jump to the next point. <clears throat> the next one is going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10. We strongly believe in repentance. That is necessary for salvation. So you have to mention to them about repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, it says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Now, <clears throat> it is so silly. There are so many, there's a hot debate about repentance, and people are like so confused, they don't even know what repentance is. It's that bad, okay? Now, trust me, when you're soul winning to somebody about repentance, you don't have to go through all this theological debate and all this conundrum because the person who's hearing it for the first time didn't even know all that kind of stuff, okay? The only people who know all this conundrum is dumb Christians because dumb Christians have been introducing false heresies about repentance, and then you got both sides fighting. You got easy believism and lordship salvation, these two heresies fighting amongst each other, and then they got so many different levels and definitions of repentance that it's not funny. It's not funny at all. Now, I gave a video thoroughly on repentance. I gave one easy one. It's called Clearing the Confusion Over Repentance Easily. That's the easy one. The second one, which I went through more every single detail, is Easy Believism, Lordship, Salvation, and Repentance. Okay? If any of you want to watch that, that's fine. That way you can get a gist of repentance. 
Now, when you're telling somebody how to get saved, this is what you want to say to make it easy so they can understand. Okay. So 2 Corinthians 7.10 says you need to repent. Uh, excuse me. I'm trying to do this word for word. Okay. To get saved, you need to repent as a sinner. So you can tell them to get saved, you need to repent as a sinner. Or you need to be sorry. You need to be sorry for being a sinner. And then after that, ask them this question. The question you need to ask them is, are you sorry for being a sinner? Now, what do you think the person is going to answer most likely? Yes. See, it, uh, you got to realize that salvation is simple. It's very simple. And as long as they have some sort of conviction over their sin, whether they feel bad about it, uh, whether they want to even quit their sin, it doesn't matter which level. The point is, is that they just need that kind of conviction. And the easiest way they can understand that is this one. Are you sorry for being a sinner? Repentance is not hard to do to get saved. Nearly everyone will say this. Yes. You'll find out that the one that they're struggling the most is believing, believe it or not. It's believing only in the shed blood of Christ. It's not this one. Because any, anybody out there can realize that what they do is wrong, and they're not proud of their actions either. But this question is important too, because that way it doesn't give a legitimate excuse for a, a sodomite to repeat some prayer after you, and then we give, we go out and say, oh yeah, this person's saved, don't worry about it. No, we are very serious in our soul winning. So in our salvation, we don't, we don't do false conversions. We stress this one a lot, so don't worry about, about it. So that's why this is important to cover, because we don't want to give a legitimate excuse to people out there that we just get people to blindly repeat a prayer and get saved. Or that we make salvation something really hard to do that nobody can do. Look, this is easy. All right, now the last one is Romans 10, 9. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. After you quote them Romans 10, 9, you ask them this, fine, uh, you ask them this question. Do you believe <clears throat> um, what's the better word? Do you believe everything Wow. I passed the line. Do you believe everything you've heard? in the gospel so far? Because Romans 10, 9 says you have to believe, right? So you gotta ask them that question. Do you believe everything you've heard in the gospel so far? If they say yes, then the next part you need to do is tell them, okay, so then all you have to do is say that to God. Okay, so all you have to do is say it to God. You're done. That's everything. Now, uh, I don't have time. Time's already up. I know we had, I know a lot of you were interested in writing good notes, but we have to end it, uh, the class here, out of respect for time. The next class, I'll cover you the introduction and the conclusion to everything we did soul winning. So the introduction is so important. That way you can have the person to listen to you, how to catch the person to listen to you. And the conclusion will be important to you because the conclusion is 
you told them all the gospel, so what am I going to do to get them to say it to God, right? All right, so let me review Romans 10, 9. That way I can make sure you all understand it, okay? You quote them Romans 10, 9. After you quote them Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt, so pay attention to the verse now, that way you can understand why I'm doing this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, so do you believe everything you've heard in the gospel so far? Yes. Okay, then all you have to do is just say it to God. That's it, and you're saved. Wasn't that easy, guys? You're all done. So that verse says, when you believe, you have to confess it. You have to say it to God. See? Now, I recommend this. One tip is this. Let me add this as a tip. <clears throat> I recommend, so all you have to do is say it to God. Do you know why I'm saying that? I don't want you to say confess. If you say confess, what do you think the person's going to think? I already told God I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. I went to a priest for confession. and See, that's what they think confess is. That's not what confess is. Confess simply means, like in a court of law, you're trying to get the criminal to what? Confess, to say it publicly that he actually did. So that's, what, that's why it's better to say, say it to God. See? Because that's what the verse is basically saying. He wants you to say it, publicly admit that you believe it. See that? So it's better to say, say, rather than confess. If you say confess, don't say it even one time, trust me. If you say confess one time, the person will automatically assume, I did pray to the Lord. I said I'm sorry, and I did all this stuff. See that? Now, I know that some of you, this is clicking now, right, when you're witnessing. You notice why I'm giving you all these tips, and you notice some of the things that you noticed in people that you're witnessing, right? So that's why this thing is extremely helpful. Look, I've witnessed to thousands of people, thousands of people, and this stuff is extremely helpful, and I know the hindrances. I know what people are thinking. I know the misunderstandings. That's why I'm giving you all this stuff, and I want you to exactly do this. Now, here's the thing I want to say to you, okay, and I'm going to close. <clears throat> I want you all to exactly do it this way. That's why I wrote every word down, okay? Now, you can probably, uh, you don't have to do it robotic, okay? You can probably switch the words here and there. But I want you to exactly do it this way. Do you know why? I worded it and did it that way for a reason. Because people are listening to the words so that they can clearly understand, so that uh, they don't get lost, so that they don't misunderstand. Not only that, it's easy. It's easy for them to click. And to remember. So I want you to do it exactly this method. Now, I had some people, one person would not listen. The person would, had pride, wanted to do it his or her way. Do you think that person did a good job in soul winning or won anybody to Christ? No. You know why? Because the person didn't get the foundation first. Does that mean I'm, I'm going to make everybody exactly like Gene Kim when they're soul winning? Of course not. In the beginning, you are, though. You know why? Because the thing is this. If you all went soul winning with us, you notice that Sean, Tom, and I, we do it differently, right? We all do it differently. But the thing is this. The reason why we ended up doing differently is because Sean and Tom and some people, they at least understood this whole concept, the important point. So until they understood the foundation and the important point, then they knew which shortcuts they could take which things they could revise, things that they could talk better. And trust me, that will happen to you in soul winning. I promise you. Look, if you do soul winning for one year, you're not going to talk exactly like me. See, that's how short of a time span is. And I promise you, you will not talk like me within one year. But that's if you faithfully do soul winning every week. That's why we stress so much in coming to visitation and street preaching. And people online, you have a greater difficulty. So you're going to have to do that somehow yourself. That's going to be even more difficult for you. What I recommend people online to do is that um, go knock on doors. That probably would be the easiest for you so you can practice this. That's the best way is to actually knock on doors. That's how you can get the people. Now, I'm going to train you guys online and people here on how to catch those people, how to start off the conversation next class. So don't worry about that. 
The point is right now, you know everything on how to do soul winning. Capish? Everyone got it? Okay. Homework for discipleship. Okay, everything you learned about soul winning, folks, okay, I want you to review. You don't have to practice. You just have to review and be familiar with everything. Practicing will happen next week. See, I don't make homework difficult, right? All right, now, this is the important thing now. Now, I want you to, uh, in your homework, let me get my homework assignment out right here. You're going to be listening to audios. Okay, people online, remember, I, in class number one, I gave you the Bible study link. That was your homework assignment to be familiar with our website. So do not ask me for the link or anything, okay? That was your homework last class, so I'm not going to repeat, okay? <laughs> Some people in the, this room are going to go, what link? I, I, what, what link, Pastor? <laughs> That's why pay attention to your homework, okay? All right. Uh, ask your classmate, okay? Ask your classmate if you don't know. <laughs> All right. Is to go to that Bible study link, and you're going to be listening to... Uh, Let's see, I'm going to be reviewing soul winning with you a little bit more. So I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to make you listen only to two Bible studies, okay? Sounds easy. Mm -hmm. All right. Normal rate will be five. I'm going to make you listen to five of my audio teachings. That's going to be the normal rate. And it won't be that difficult, don't worry, okay? It won't be that difficult. I know it sounds difficult, but it's not actually difficult. All you have to do is listen to me talk. Okay, so the studies I want you to listen to are these. I want you to listen to the study of sin, and I want you to listen to the study of faith. That's it. Two audios that I want you to listen to. Now, when you listen to these two audios, I want you to pay attention to this part now. When you're listening to these two audios, I want you to pay attention to how I teach. I'm going to say the next section is, the next section is, the next section is, part A, uh, point number one, point number two, point number three. I do it in an outline format. That's why I wanted you to buy the book, God's Answers to Man's Questions by Alvin Douglas. And you're going to see that I do a similar pattern like he does. And then um, when I give you point number one, point number two, point number three, stuff like that, you just write, all you have to do is write that down and write the verse next to it in each point. Okay? So at first it'll be getting used to, but trust me, when I started church, when I started church, I taught that way. They all did fine. You all do fine. There's going to be some information you miss out, but don't worry about that. That's why we have a class to expound on those audios that you listen to, okay? Dismiss us now with your blessing, Lord. Thank you so much for the truth of thy word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do 
believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure. You could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried, and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.